When you are new to Simulink, it's really important to learn how to create sine wave in Simulink. Because in every small and big simulation, somewhere we are going to use sine waves, right? So that is why in this video, we are going to learn how to create sine wave in Simulink. So first of all, we'll go to library. And in library, we'll go to sources. In sources, here we have the block sine wave. Let's add this block. And in sync, we have a scope. So let's add this scope too. Let's minimize it and let's connect them together. Now just open it. So when you open this sine wave block, what you will see is sine type, whether you want to go for time base or sample base. So for normal simulations, we'll go for time base. The next is time t. And here also we have two options, use simulation time and use external signal. Most of the time we'll go for use simulation time. And now the important things comes into picture. The first is amplitude. From here you can set the amplitude of your sine wave. For example, I am keeping amplitude as 2. The rest of the things will remain as it is, but just changing the amplitude, running the simulation. So here is the generated sine function. I have provided the amplitude as 2. So what does that amplitude means? That amplitude means the peak value of sine function. And instead of this peak, if you want to go for the RMS, then what you're supposed to do? You're supposed to convert that RMS into peak and then supposed to enter the peak value over here. So if you know RMS of the sine wave and you want to implement a sinusoidal waveform with the RMS that you know, then you're supposed to write the equation in this manner. Let's say your RMS is 70 and you need to multiply it with. So it will convert into pick, right? So let's say, okay, close it and now run it. So now you see when the peak is almost 100, the RMS is near, near about 70, right? So if you know the RMS value from that RMS, you can directly write the peak amplitude of this sine wave. Now the next term is bias. So what does this bias means? Bias means you are providing any external biasing to this waveform. Here the biasing is zero. That means it is not levitated either it up or down, right? So the bias is simply the neutral line for this sine wave and right now that is zero. Now I'll just change amplitude to 10, right? Right. So this is our amplitude. Let's close it, right? So the amplitude is 10 and now I'm going to change the bias. So right now the bias is at zero, but instead of this zero, I'll make it two. So the waveform will shift by two steps on upward direction. So let's close it, run it and observe the waveform. So now here you can see the biasing point has changed. The waveform has levitated to 2 volts or 2 steps or any 2 amplitude. Now instead of this plus 2, if you give minus 4. Let's run it again. And you can see it's shifted down to minus 4. So by providing this type of biasing, either you can shift the sine wave up or you can pull it down. Now close it will make biasing zero again will reduce amplitude to three right and now it's time for frequency currently the frequency is represented in radian per second so from this you can set the frequency you want let's say you want 10 radian per second you can set it and run it so here you can see the frequency has increased now let's close it now the question is now here the frequency you supposed to enter that is in radian per second. But what if you know the frequency in hertz and directly you want to write the frequency in hertz. Now what you can do, let's say you want to implement the frequency of 50 hertz. So you supposed to do 50 multiplied by 2 multiplied by pi. So 50 into 2 into pi that is the frequency in hertz. So the radian per second is nothing but the frequency in hertz multiplied by 2 pi. So OK, run and here we see the frequency in hertz. 
when the 50 hertz frequency we apply a time taken to complete one cycle that is around 0.02 second and that's absolutely correct right so close it again now open here from the next step you can provide a phase delay right for example uh, instead of uh, zero radian you supposed to shift the waveform by two radian right and let's reduce frequency a bit so that we can have a clear idea frequency is one radian phase delay is zero okay run so this is our reference waveform now let's make change over here phase delay is two radian run again and you can see the shift in waveform so by providing that phase delay you can just shift the waveform and now finally we have sample time so what we'll do we'll make it zero right run so this is our reference waveform and the last quantity that we supposed to understand that is sample time here sample time represents the amount of time after which you will take a sample and plot it in scope so uh, let's say if i am taking sample time as 0.2 right so at every 0.2 second it will take a reading and plot so instead of pure sinusoidal waveform i'll get this type of steps so at every 0.2 second it will take a sample after 0.2 seconds again it will take a sample and it will create a discrete type of sine wave so that's how you can create a sinusoidal waveform in matlab simulink and if you are interested in learning more similar stuff in simulink then you can refer this playlist and if you want to learn more about matlab programming then you can refer this playlist so see you in that video